Hi, and welcome to a great episode of Our Road to Camelot. This episode came about because of a class that I was teaching here at the resort, but turned into information that I felt would be very useful for those of you out there traveling looking for Wi-Fi solutions. So more on travel Wi-Fi after this. If you're only here to see the Wi-Fi solutions, check out the timestamp down below. Jump to that part of the video right now, and we'll get it'll. I'll be right at that point talking about the Wi-Fi solutions. I do have some preliminary stuff I want to go over first. First of all, do you even need a Wi-Fi solution? Your data usage may not be that severe enough that you need to find an alternate uh, solution to this, or it could be that you're just not even sure what kind of data you're using. So I'm going to start out by talking about data. I'm going to start uh, talking about comparing different cell service plans that are out there and what they would offer you. And then we get into the meat of it, which is where you're jumping to, if you haven't already, to where the um, I'm going to be talking about seven different solutions, three satellite solutions, four cell-based solutions, and it's side by side comparison and that's really what i find important basically what's happening here is we are trying to find the best possible solution for traveling and having enough data to do what i need to do we have had uh, issues with this for the last few years and i'm done with trying to use the park wi-fi and i really hate traveling out to unsecured sites like mcdonald's and starbucks and places like that so it got me into the mindset of there's got to be something out there. And as I started searching the problem I'm running into, I cannot find anybody doing side-by-side -side comparisons unless it's their own side-by-side -side comparison of their own plans, such as AT&T showing you what they're doing and so on and so on. So we're going to go ahead and get into it right now. I wanted to basically talk a little bit about data usage, the short and the long of it, as, as I put it here. The short is the average person uses around 60 megabytes per hour when browsing the web. But the long of it, it's far more involved than that. So I pulled this information off using some information that AT&T had out there. So check out the description of this video and I have all sorts of links that'll allow you to take you all over the place to get information. But basically using the AT&T data calculator, I have some things out here that might look interesting, such as sending and receiving emails, uh, 600 emails equals 100 meg. So 0.1 gig. Streaming music, 250 hours is about a gigabyte. And you can, I'm not going to read every one to you, but you kind of look down that list and you can see different things that add up. What we needed the most is the fact that Dawn likes streaming movies using the Fire Stick. So even streaming at standard def, 10 hours equals 7 gig. That adds up fast. I need to upload and download video files. And right there, it's very simple. One gig file equals one gig of data. Last Sunday's video, I think was like one and a half gig. That took up one and a half gig of data to upload that to YouTube. So understand what this basically means. And we're going to get into more on how this ties into why we need extra in our plan. So if you look at this right now, Don would have watched 10 hours in probably a week. I would have uploaded two or three videos and they weren't one and a half gig videos. They were like two, three, some four gig videos. We wound up running out of data halfway through our plan. You want to analyze your data usage. You might be able to better organize your use. I have a cousin that's traveling. He uses his phone and a dongle for the phone to stream video directly to his TV. And we have done that in the past. Some of the streaming services don't allow you and will block you from doing that, but quite a few of them will allow you to stream directly to your TV. So that's one option for viewing movies and things. You can definitely stream YouTube. And a lot of data plans are unlimited 
text and calling and data as long as you're only using your phone and they even give you unlimited streaming as long as it's coming off of your phone so if you organize yourselves you might be better off and we were doing that but there were certain things we couldn't do from our phone that we had to use our phone to tether and that's what ate up our memory for the month quick comparison of cell data plans i'm not going to get into this too heavily but let me go ahead and zoom in on this and i'll zoom in some more so you can see this but i found the top data plan plans for the big three, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. And once again, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, but I'm going to point out some very important things. And you'll have this whole chart to look at on your own that will be linked below. But what I wanted to point out is we have the AT&T Unlimited Elite. And what you may notice is we do get unlimited talk and text. We get unlimited data and no slowdown during busy networks, but that's data on the phone only. And then we do have 5G access where there's 5G available, but hotspot data, 40 gigs per line. We run out of that halfway through the month when I try to use the hotspot. We just can't get enough. So after two weeks, we're completely shut down and throttled to where it's useless. And we have to wait another two weeks or more before we can start up again. And that's just not acceptable. We can't deal with that. Streaming, yes, you can get up to 4K streaming. But if you remember looking back on that other sheet, how much 4K streaming eats up of your data, it's going to take up most of our data in like the first few hours. So that we don't want to do that one either. So I do have a lot of information out here. We're going to move ahead from this. But just so you understand where we're coming from and why we're looking for this other solution. So let's go ahead and get back. First, we're going to talk about satellite internet. There are three big ones out there right now, and the new kid on the block is Starlink. We've got Starlink, HughesNet, and Viasat. So basically, what I've discovered on speeds is Starlink, they're boasting much higher than this. They're boasting that you're going to be able to get up to 400 megabytes per second, but in reality, they're getting about 104, which is still huge over HughesNet and Viasat. The uploads once again, they're bo um, they're boasting higher, but they're getting about 12, and that's still unbelievable compared to the other two. And the latency is low compared to HughesNet and Viasat. So right off the bat, I'm already looking at SpaceX Starlink if we do decide to go satellite. This gives you a little bit better idea. They're all satellite-based. Average download speeds, this is what people are actually getting. People in some areas are getting 200 megabytes per second. On average, it's between 100 to 200, maybe 150 in that neighborhood. HughesNet, Viasat, not even close. Upload speeds, 13 mega, uh, megabits per second for Starlink. The latency, there it is. Uh, service plan, Starlink is true unlimited. HughesNet and Viasat definitely have caps and their price tags are huge. Equipment cost, you buy the Starlink satellite for $499. HughesNet and Viasat, from what I was able to find out, I didn't go any deeper than that. It looked like you would get free installation, but you do pay a rental fee, and I could not track down that rental fee without talking to somebody at their company, but the rental fee is not super cheap. Monthly subscriptions, $99 a month for Starlink, and HughesNet and Viasat, as you see there, they're definitely quite a bit more than that. Basically what's happening with Starlink is they have added new features, it seems like every month. Last month I did a, some research on this, and prior to last month, if you wanted to move from one location to the other, it would take about four days for you to go online, contact Starlink, say, hey, I want to move locations. They would then put it in their system, make sure that there was an open space for you in that area, plug you in, four days later, you're up and running. It doesn't work real well if you're traveling. What Starlink has done now is they put it in the hands of the user. I would be able to go online to the Starlink website, type in my new location, and within an hour later of arriving at that location, I now have a spot, I'm now ready to go. There's some areas where you're still not gonna get coverage, but it is pretty good overall. And the fact that that's happened, that's awesome. Starlink is starting a new thing and it's purely random on their end. They're finding people are doing a lot of travel and they're actually beta testing and unlocking roaming 
which means they will get to their new site and lo and behold, they're already connected. They didn't have to do anything. And that's what we've been waiting for, for travelers. Uh, we do have some pros and cons. Um, I have there under miscellaneous information, Starlink is still beta testing and new things are happening all the time, which I just explained. The pros, it's faster than conventional satellite. It's easy to install. Now it says here, superior portability. I got this off another site. And their cons also said, not portable. <laughs> what does that mean? Superior portability means you hook it onto your RV or fifth wheel or whatever you're traveling in and you get to the new location, it's there, it's easy to install and it's always with you. The other portability where it's not convenient is the fact that it is locked to your rig. You can't just leave here and go to the coffee shop and use your Wi-Fi from Starlink at the coffee shop. It doesn't work that way. It's slower internet in cities because there's more people in the cities that are using it. It'll slow down. It gets disrupted. In fact, all of them, HughesNet, Viasat, Starlink, they all slow down or get disrupted where you don't get any coverage at all if you have lousy weather. You need a clear sky for this thing to work optimally. You can look at the pros and cons of HughesNet and Viasat because to be honest in my book, if I'm going Going with this, Starlink is the winner. So let's move on. Comparing cell based solutions. There's limitations to using your phone as a hotspot. I did do some research, and there are some plans that you can get for mobile hotspots that will drastically reduce how much you're spending and also increase on how much Wi-Fi you're, and data you're going to be able to pull in. Let's go ahead and look at them. The first thing I looked at was the Togo Roadlink C2 by Weingard. When this first came out, it was an amazing deal. I almost bought it. We waited until we picked up our fifth wheel first, and right as we picked up the fifth wheel, news came out that AT&T, who originally handled the true unlimited plan, it came out to like 30 bucks a month. The problem was they pulled the plug and said, we're discontinuing that. No one's allowed to grandfather in, and it's over as of January 2020. Unfortunately now, everybody had bought these devices now and they weren't going to get a plan that was affordable. When AT&T replaced it, the 100 gig plan is now 150 a month. The unlimited plans are like two, $300 a month. It's absurd. The device itself costs $399 and there were some issues there. If you look at the three top end mobile hotspots for the top three companies, they aren't cheap for the hotspot, but you do get some pretty decent plans. T-Mobile is actually an awesome plan, but then again, that's also 4G, 5G with Wi-Fi 6. The speeds are great. The device, you can get it for $299 at Amazon, and you're only paying $50 a month for 100 gig use. Now, is 100 gig going to work? Personally, yes. I got through two weeks on 40 gig. 100 gig is going to get me the other two weeks and then a little bit more. So I think this plan is going to actually work for us. I originally was looking at AT&T because we already have an AT&T account. But I was at the AT&T store today and what I discovered, um, a couple things that kind of turned me off to them. First of all, the numbers up on top look great. Um, now it was weird that I saw $464 through Amazon, so it's $100 plus more than the T-Mobile MiFi. And, um, but I did see the $199, or it said 89 with a two year contract through AT&T. Now this is information I got from AT&T. Very vague, didn't explain a lot. What it basically means is, and actually I could get that hotspot through AT&T for $6.95 a month tagged onto my bill over 30 some odd months, whatever that is. So it does come out to a little over $200 when it was all totaled up. But the problem is, is that I cannot buy it for that price unless I have it tied into my actual data plan uh, through my phone. And what that means is I cannot get the price tag you see below of $55 for 100 gigabytes of data. I only get the $55 for 100 gig if and only if I do a prepaid data plan. And if I'm not mistaken, T-Mobile and even 
Verizon, the prices you see here, as I found out, are for prepaid plans, not tacked on to your regular plan. So I was going to go with AT&T because we're already with AT&T, but the fact that I'm going to have to buy the unit separately and I'm going to have to do a prepaid plan, to me, T-Mobile is going to be the way to go. Verizon still, as always, is pricier than anybody else. The 100 gigs is 60, but they do have a plan for more if you need more. I had not found anything about more data for the other two. But what I loved about AT&T is the fact that you got 19 hours of battery. But this was with the Nighthawk LTE mobile hotspot. I found out they have a new version of the Nighthawk, which is a 5G version, and it only gets eight hours. So I'm actually going to be getting a 5G, which ties into what T-Mobile's MiFi is, and I'm going to be losing a couple of hours off of it. So, um, and they were both the exact same price, that 400 and however much to buy it outright. So I don't see going that route. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons. First of all, let's get back to Togo Roadlink. I said there was a little bit of a light at the end of their tunnel. T-Mobile, their new data plan on a SIM card, their prepaid plan, $50 for 100 gig, is actually going to work on the Roadlink. If we did decide, you know what, let's go for the Roadlink after all, because there are some good features with the Roadlink, and we might decide to go that route. If we do, the T-Mobile plan would work for that now. So we're kind of excited. That just got released um, just weeks ago from when I'm making this video, or about a week ago. The downside of Togo, there's a lot of old info. If you try to Google search it or YouTube search it, I found information that was put out two months ago, and two months ago, the person who put it out was still talking about AT&T's unlimited plan for, what was it, 30 bucks a month. It's not there. You've got a lot of old info that is muddied up into current info, and you're going to have a hard time finding the actual truth to what's happening with the Togo Roadlink. But if you are an owner of one of those, get a hold of T-Mobile or check out that T-Mobile prepaid plan and see if you can find that. That's going to be your saving grace on that one. And if you look at the others, the pros and cons, T-Mobile, Instigo 5G MiFi, the pros, it is full 4G, 5G speeds. It's got a great touchscreen and an affordable 100 gig service. Downside, there is no external antenna port. So if you're in an area where you're not getting good T-Mobile coverage, you're not going to be able to plug an antenna in to bring in a better signal. The Nighthawk, it is the fastest hotspot hardware that's out there right now. It does have that, well, that one has an excellent battery life. The new one, not so much. Now, they say it's heavy. I mean, it's a portable device. How heavy could it be? I, I don't know what people are thinking. Are you going to be carrying it in your shirt pocket and it's going to weigh you down? I don't know. That just seemed ridiculous, but I'm just putting what I found. There is no touchscreen on one, but the new one does have a touchscreen. It's probably what's eaten up all the battery life on the thing. And finally, the Verizon. It does support many users and Wi-Fi 6. It does have a solid 4G, 5G performance. Verizon right now does have limited 5G coverage. When you're watching this, if it's further away from when I made this, it could be amazing 5G by then. And so it does also have the mediocre battery life, but then all of them kind of have that now. So that's basically what I've discovered. This is the side-by-side. -side. My top picks, if you're going to go satellite and realize if you look at the side-by-side, -side, pull up that. Well, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see me. I had to switch cameras. My camera overheated for some reason. I'm not happy about that. Anyways, back to it here. So What's happening is my top pick is Starlink for satellite. The downside between Starlink and my top pick for mobile Wi-Fi hotspot is Starlink is going to be slower by a half to a quarter of what the mobile hotspot is going to give me. And it is twice the price. It's going to be $99. However, it is going to follow me everywhere uh, because it is satellite base. It's only going to get better. Top pick for mobile, and this is probably what we're going to go with. I was going to go with the Nighthawk with AT&T, but what I've recently discovered, as I explained, I am not going to be using it with my regular data plan that I have with uh, AT&T. So we are going to buy the T-Mobile NCGO 5G MiFi M2000. Uh, it is a better price point. It's a cheaper rate. 11 hours is not going to be all that bad. Uh, I, we're not going to really need that. We're always going to be able to charge the thing up. 
So that's basically it. That's my rundown of my top picks. So uh, check out all the resources that I have below in the notes. Um, do some of your own research. Please share what you find in my comments to help us out for anyone who happens to start reading this and think, hey, has anybody found anything better? There are a lot of independents out there, a ton of independent plans, and I haven't even started to scratch the surface on that. I wanted to go with the big companies first, and we might have a follow-up, and I'll look at some of these smaller data plans that are out there. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscription button. Give us a thumbs up for good measure. And if you want to know every time we post, hit that bell. It'll tell you when we post every Sunday at 2 o'clock. Until then, safe travels, and we will see you on the road.